I must say a very special thank you to Sharon. Sharon asked me, yes, if I would do the lecture um, about the legacy of my father and the last of the series here in Palm Beach for this season. I also have to thank Sharon because she was my step-by-step -step mentor for this, my premier PowerPoint <laughs> presentation. <laughs> And um, there are people here tonight that I want to acknowledge and introduce who are very significant in my life and were very significant in my father's life. We have Bruce, long-suffering husband of 56 years. <laughs> Bruce was not only a son-in-law, but Bruce and Gus were very good friends. But Bruce learned early on not to ask Gus a question that he would have to endure a two-hour answer. <laughs> okay. We also have here, thank you, we have friends, the Coens, and our daughter, Ava Berry from Chicago, who we are thrilled that she came here for, for us this week. Now, Ava and her brother Spencer, who is not here this evening, had a remarkable um, life of a grandchildren with their grandpa, Poppy Gus. It was a very special relationship for them. We also have here lifelong friends. Martin and Diane Johnson. Now, Martin is an award-winning artist here in Florida. And, and Martin is one of the very few people who ever understood what my father was talking about. <laughs> um, I am not an Art Deco historian, so I am not going to speak about the motifs or what the past days uh, of Art Deco were like or what the future holds for Art Deco. I'm gonna leave that up to our in-house Art Deco expert, Sharon. Today, it's gonna be about one special artist who is unparalleled in his desire and his works for illusion and passion for um, and passion for goddesses and images beyond our sphere, and that's Gustav Cates, my father. Now, what I'm going to start in the beginning with Grandpa Herman and Grandma Rose Cates. Now, Rose and Herman came to this country in the very early days of the 20th century, each with their own families. From, they were Eastern European Jews, and they were more sophisticated than other Jewish immigrants coming at the time to the country. They assimilated immediately. They married in 1912, and my father was born October of 1913. Now, this is a photograph in 1962 of their 50th wedding anniversary. As you can see, Grandma is a stunning, elegant woman, and Grandpa was uh, sharp himself there. A little shorter, but he was also sharp. Now, um, Grandpa was a wheeler dealer, and he was into many different businesses. One of them was a nightclub in Coney Island, New York. Now, everybody knows Nathan's, I assume, and in the early days of my, my father's childhood, they lived in quite an exclusive community called Seagate. Now, it's hard to see, but Nathan's is on Stillwell Avenue, and if you would go straight down, Bruce explained to the end, that's where Seagate still sits. 
It's still exclusive and probably unaffordable. Beverly Sills live there and many other well-known uh, people. Now, Grandma Rose um, was elegant, but we never really knew what she did. I think she was a homemaker and didn't have too many jobs. Um, when Dad was in his teens, they moved to the Midwood section of Brooklyn. But here we have the heydays of Coney Island over there. Yeah, yeah. So um, Dad graduated from Erasmus High School. And everybody know Erasmus? Did you? Oh, you did? You did? Oh, your father was there too, Martin. Yeah, wow, small world. Well, from there, um, Dad took art classes at Cooper Union and the Art Students League. He always wanted to be an artist, and so he lamented later in life how he was never really encouraged to go to college. By the time Dad was 20, he opened his own studio in New York. And this is very interesting because some of the works on the wall we still have. One of them was right in front of his head is Aries. Now, Aries is the ram, is the zodiac sign for March 20th to April 20th. And wouldn't you know, I'm an Aries. So I love that picture. Actually, my mother sold it um, right before she passed away. Somebody was interested in that in about 2010. Also at that time, when my father was 17, he painted Sacrifice, Woman of Universal Bondage. Now, Sacrifice sat on the um, fireplace, on the mantel of my Herman and Rose Cates' home. From there, when they passed away, it went to my parents' home, and now we have it in our house. I'm going to give you, now and then, some of my father's feelings, beliefs, and mindsets that we're just going to see on the screen. I would walk the streets of Manhattan and look up into the heavens and feel the wonderment of worlds to be. Now, by 1939, Dad had met my mother, Mildred Kupferberg. My mother was a Polish immigrant who came here at 15 as a naturalized citizen because her mother was already a citizen in the country. So Mildred and her older brother and sister came here as citizens. Now my mother went to finishing school, they called it then, and designed a school and became a milliner. And she made the most magnificent hats, some of which I still have. During those days, my father painted hundreds and hundreds, knocked off hundreds of paintings of, um, of the ones I had show, so, shown you in his uh, studio, and classics such as Silent Masks and Waterfall Girls. Now, I'm going to go back because Fortuneurs was the place to go. It was the most exquisite store. Does anyone remember Brooklyn Fortune Offs? And then there was Long Island Fortune Offs. And then, oh, really, really. So dad had gotten some teenage boys from the neighborhood to come to his studio in our home in Brooklyn and help him put these hundreds of pictures together to sell to Fortune Offs, to Gimbals, and many other stores in Brooklyn. Now, this picture, Silent Masks, which we still have, actually, Bruce pointed out that Gus was 100 years ahead of his time. Because if you walk around any 
uh, mall today, you will see the young people with the colored hair and crazy hairdos. <laughs> This is also, Enchanted Mask is, was a classic deco. We have the original painted Enchanted Mask in one of our guest rooms in New Jersey where our granddaughters sleep and stay and they, they have. And all but one made us take it off. We have five granddaughters when they stayed over. <laughs> Scared them. Tell me about the signature. Well, we will. We're going to get to that. Now here we have. <laughs> now here we have Dad's logo. When Dad was young, I noticed on some of the very early uh, paintings in block letters he wrote Gus Cates. But as years went on, um, as years went on, he changed them and you know, always making something a little different and making it better. But I want you to notice that there is, I don't have a pointer, that K, there's a G. That's a G yes. in the K for Kate's. And so he perfected this and it became his signature logo. While this is on, let me just explain that. Growing up in the 20s and 30s, Gus was romanticized by the deco movement. And he said, it will ever be remembered as a period that introduced illusion and spirit to modernism. In an article in 1985, my father explained that he created a style only for himself because he was a non-competitive person and was able to create in a way that was unique. Now, here we, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, yes. Now, my brother and I were born during the war, during World War II. At that time, men with young families were deferred from going to the service, but Uncle Sam still wanted them to do something for the War Department. So Dad worked in the Brooklyn